are in my lab uh, in the Department of Earth Sciences at Carleton University. And I was showing you our new uh, breeding colony of uh, fluorescent axolotls. We are studying the evolution of the skull, uh, and so we're using these axolotls to trace what parts of the embryo actually give rise to the skull right now, and then how we can uh, see what mechanisms govern the development of the skull, looking at the genetics of the animal afterwards. This is exciting to me because uh, this is basically a question that will address uh, why animals are as diverse as they are today, period. So why we have the skull form of a fish versus a bird. So learning about the underlying um, biological rules that sort of dictate that evolution of that diversity. An interesting thing that I've learned about uh, working with amphibians in particular is that uh, we often think of them as being very primitive representatives for the land-dwelling animals, but it turns out what they're doing is actually highly derived, so um, they're very secondarily modified in their, uh, the way they form the skull and the way that that's evolved. So uh, they're no longer being very really good representatives of that primitive tetrapod condition for us anymore.